Hi, I'm Jerry Horning, and this is the first in the series of six videotapes demonstrating pottery techniques. In this first tape, I will demonstrate how to make a cylinder. You must be able to make a cylinder in order to make any of these pots. You can see this cup is a cylinder with a handle added. This teapot even is a cylinder that's been a little bit expanded. This bottle is a tall cylinder, rather difficult to throw tall at this time. This is another cylinder that has just a little shape added to it and a handle. In this first tape, we're just going to learn to make the cylinder. Giving form to the pots will come later. We need to learn to make the cylinder before we can do anything else. So let's go to the wheel. I'm just re-wedging this clay a little bit before we get started throwing our cylinders. This is the spiral method of wedging clay and it uh, is a nice way to wedge soft clay. I'm pushing just a little more with my right hand than I am with my left hand so that it goes around in, in a cone-shaped spiral. Then to begin throwing with, <clears throat> with the clay, we like to take a piece of clay that your hands feel comfortable with to start with. If you have too much clay in the beginning, your hands aren't strong enough yet to control it. And if you use clay that is uh, too small for your hands, at this point your hands are not flexible enough to control that clay. So we'll start out with clay that looks like about the size of a baseball, something that your hands fit completely around. Now we're going to throw a cylinder. <clears throat> the first problem in the throwing is to get the clay in the center of the wheel. To do that, we have to brace our right arm tightly against your side or against the top of the wheel. And the left hand works just opposite of that to push the thumbs up. The right hand basically stays the same, and the right hand is in front of you as opposed to on the side. If, the, if your hand is on the side, the clay can easily push it to the side. But if you put your hand in front, it, the clay has to push against your whole body and against the, the side of the wheel. The left hand then works opposite of the right hand to push the clay down, and we're just re-wedging the clay by taking this clay up and down and putting it in the center of the wheel. It takes me maybe three times to get this clay centered, get all those particles of clay lined up, ready to become a pot. Up and down. And when you change from one position to the other, you have to do it very carefully, very slowly. Release the pressure on the clay so that it will stay centered. <clears throat> It's centered when it goes, when it marks all the way around like that. To open it up, I use the index finger of my right hand and my thumb and push the clay down within a quarter of an inch of the wheel head at the bottom. Now I'm going to flatten the bottom on the inside. I put both hands in there and just pull it parallel to the wheel right towards me so that I give, have the whole bottom of the cylinder flat, about a quarter of an inch. So I put this in there and just pull very firmly. Don't go down anymore. Just pull it parallel to the wheel head to the outside. Then we use the slip on the outside of the clay for lubrication. We don't want to put any more water on it at this point. The clay will just absorb the water and become too soft to stand up. Now again we're moving the clay very slowly and steadily up to the top. I'm touching my fingers 
to each other through the clay. I pinch and make all the clay conform to that space between my fingers and go right up to the top. Now you can take as many times as you want uh, to pull this clay up into a cylinder. The cylinder is the basis for m most pots. With the exception of bowls or plates, all the pots come out of a cylinder. And if you can throw a six inch cylinder, you can make hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of pots. Be sure to always have contact between your two hands like this. Touch your fingers tips to each other through the clay. Brace your right arm, move it up slowly to the side and stop throwing just under the lip and compress that lip so that there is a, a definite termination of the pot. One more time, if you want, just to clean it up, make it straight. This is a good test. Like I said, if you can throw a six inch cylinder, you can make lots of wonderful pots. Now with the throwing stick, I'm going to clean off a little bit of the extra clay that's always at the bottom. And in the beginning, you'll have a lot of extra clay at the bottom of your pots, but don't worry. You have to run about a ton of clay through your hands before they get the message, before they understand how thick the, the pot is, how much uh, torque the clay can stand. Take the clay off. We have this twisted wire that we draw tight, hold your thumbs on top of it or your fingers, pull it tight, and the wheel is going slowly as you cut it off. And you dry a couple of fingertips, spread your fingers wide so you s distribute the support, turn it and lift it, and then set it off, and you're ready to do another one. And if you can do this cylinder, then we can make all those wonderful pots we talked about earlier. There are many kinds of pottery wheels. This is the leech wheel, which is a treadle wheel. I have to keep kicking this in order to control the speed of the wheel. Uh, the leech wheel, I like the leech wheel because it is uh, somehow uncontrollable. You don't have absolute control over the, this, the leech wheel. Electric wheels are good for throwing large pieces of clay or for centering large pieces of clay. And even though the wheel was invented maybe 5,000 years ago, the techniques of throwing on the wheel haven't changed very much at all. So the techniques we're talking about in this first tape are still the same techniques that someone had to learn three, four thousand BC. And um, there's no shortcuts in learning how to throw. You have to throw that clay through your hands until they get strong enough and sensitive enough to control the shape of the pot. All you need to make pots is a piece of clay on a potter's wheel and a few tools. A throwing stick, this is a throwing stick that I make out of a dowel and I use a sanding disc to sharpen it and to make a point on it. This is a commercially made throwing stick that I use. And a needle and a twisted wire to cut the pots off the wheel with. And of course, most importantly, your two hands. The first step in throwing is to get the clay centered. And uh, each step in throwing the pot is very important. We have to get the clay centered on the wheel head. That's the most difficult part in the beginning. We're going to use the water as lubrication. The right hand has to be braced firmly in front of the clay. If it's on the side of the clay like this, the clay can easily push the hand to the side. So that's why you want to break your wrist and bring it around in front of you so that you have the full weight of your body behind your, your arm here like this. The left hand then is just the opposite of the right hand, 
and you squeeze the clay together and raise it up. The right hand pushes the clay over a little bit, left hand pushes the clay back like this. The wheel at this point is going fast, the fastest as it ever goes. It slows down from here to the end of the pot. Take the clay up and down about three times, releasing it slowly so that it's centered. <clears throat> now use the slip that's on your hand to open it up. I use the right hand index finger and the left thumb. Find the center and open it up. You can use both thumbs. You can use two hands like this, whatever you prefer, but the important thing is that it, your hands are braced steadily, and once you find the center, don't change a thing, just keep putting pressure on it until it goes down to within a quarter of an inch of the wheel head, just like that. So the outside is centered, and the inside is centered, and it should be about a quarter of an inch from the wheel head. We'll cut that up so you can see what it's supposed to look like. So here we are, that came up a little bit, but this is a quarter of an inch here, and the next step is to pull the clay out to the side. We want all the clay to come out parallel to the wheel head, so it's like this. So I'll start over and get to that point as quickly as I can. up and down about three times. The secret is not to move your hands any more than necessary. Eliminate all kinds of wasted movement. Release the clay gently and it should be centered. Now we open up the clay down to the wheel head almost. Now I'm going to put the left hand on the inside and the right hand right on top and pull very steadily out to the edge. Left hand in there and the right hand right on top so I'm braced firmly and I pull it out to the edge. Tendency here sometimes is to go down, so be careful about that. And go back and make sure that the bottom of the cylinder is flat, is parallel to the wheel head, about a quarter of an inch thick. Now we have this ring of centered clay on the outside. Let's cut that and look at it. We have a quarter of an inch thick base, a nice thick rim that, of clay that's centered. So all, now all we have to do is to take a pinch of that clay like that and hold your hand steady and move the clay up and towards the center as it's spinning around through your fingers. Just like that. I'll cut this and start again. As long as there's no water on this piece of clay here, you can just start right on top of that. If there's water under there, then the clay won't stick, of course. It'll slide around on you. You have to run about a ton of clay through your fingers before they get the message or before they get strong enough to control the clay. Centered, open it up, flatten the bottom on the inside, pull it out to the, out to the edge, clean that bottom up, make sure at this point that the bottom of the cylinder is flat like you want it. 
Now we have a nice thick ring of centered clay here, and we have to do two things with it. We have to pinch the walls and raise the walls up towards the center. So we take a bite, take a pinch, and both hands are moving towards the center of the wheel and relaxing when you get to the top and compressing the rim. Use the slip that's on your hands now for lubrication. If we add water at this point, the clay will absorb the water too easily and the clay will become so soft that it won't stand up. Notice that my right arm is still braced against the base of the wheel and I compress this clay at the rim for extra strength at the rim, as well as visually finishing the pot. Notice that my hands are always in contact with each other. Even this, my two thumbs touching each other is very helpful in controlling my two fingertips. This rim is very soft, so we just hold it on center with the left hand and compress this rim with the right hand a little bit. Notice I haven't added any water to this clay since we opened it up. Now I'm just trying to make all the clay the same thickness. And my wrist is still braced against the side of the wheel. With the throwing stick then I'll clean off a little bit of the clay that always hides down at the bottom of your pots. Just hold it steady until you get down to the wheel head. Then hold the stick at an angle so that the clay will come off onto the stick, sort of like a snow plow. And then at this point it looks like it's stuck to the wheel head so we'll cut a little shadow under there. Now it sort of has become its own little pot. Now let's cut this and see what we have. What we're looking for at this point is to have both of these walls the same thickness. If, if they're thick but the same, that's, that's a good sign. That's okay. We want a flat, a flat bottom, straight walls, and a thick rim at the top here, a nice termination at the top of the pot. If you can throw this six-inch cylinder with nice, even walls, you can make all those pots that we were talking about earlier. This is a good test. We want these fingertips to be touching each other through the clay and lifting it up at a nice, steady pace as the clay is spinning in your hand and stopping at the at the rim. Then at the rim we just gently hold this clay because it's so flexible at this point. This isn't squeezing, it's just holding it there while we compress the clay down a little bit to make a nice termination at the top of the pot. This relationship between your two fingertips is very important. They can't be off sideways or top and bottom like that. Very important to hold yourself still, get the feel of the clay, and you can throw these cylinders. Clay is a wonderful material and it has its own rules. The clay I'm using uh, right now is probably just half ball clay, half fire clay, and a little bit of sand and uh, some grog. But there are thousands of kinds of clay, almost as many kinds of clay as there are people. So after you get into throwing, um, you will discover what kind of clay you like to make pots out of. Some people like to make very coarse pots, and so they use a very coarse clay. And some people like to make refined pots or porcelain, so they use a very fine clay. This will all be up to you, but the techniques are all the same. You will also discover, <clears throat> as you throw more and more, that aged clay 
is more plastic and more malleable than fresh made clay. The reason for that is that the particles of clay are like little disks. And if the aged if the, if the clay is aged, there's water between each one of those particles and the clay slides very nicely on all that water. If the clay is freshly made, I mean even fresh meaning a week ago, uh, there's not water completely covering all those platelets in the clay, so it, it'll break and tear sometimes instead of stretch. So ball clay is uh, a clay that has very fine particles, and therefore it's what we call a plastic clay. And fire clay has larger particles, and kaolin has larger particles, and those clays are not very plastic, relatively speaking. But a mixture of all those clays make, make a nice combination for throwing on the wheel. Making clay, like everything else in ceramics, requires a little bit of skill and a little bit of practice before you can get the clay to be the right consistency. Uh, a good test for that is when the clay is coming out, if you roll it between your hands like this, make a coil and wrap it around your finger, and if it wraps around without breaking, then you know that it'll be plastic enough to use on the wheel. Aging, of course, will make it even better, make it even more plastic, but at least you know you're in the right ballpark with that. Be enough clay to get it started. This is another way of wedging your clay. We cut it in half and we throw it down so that these two cut faces are facing in the same direction. So it only takes about 15 or so times of cutting this clay like this before it's wedged. Then you can take it again, cut it on the wire and make it into balls of clay that you can take to the wheel. We have to get the clay centered in the wheel and that's the difficult part in the beginning here. We use the water as lubrication and we have to brace our arms very carefully in front of the clay. If, if it's on the side of the clay, the clay will push, easily push your arm to the side. So make sure that your hand is in front of the clay, maybe even braced on your hip, at least against the side of the wheel. And the left hand works right against the right hand. The wheel goes as fast as it ever goes right at this point and then you take the clay up and down. It usually takes about three times to get this clay centered. And actually what we're doing is wedging the clay some more. When you release the pressure, do it very gently so that it stays centered. Now use the slip that's on your hand to open it up. I use the right hand, index finger, and the left thumb. Find the center and open it up within a quarter of an inch of the wheel head and release the pressure very slowly again. When you open the clay up, sometimes uh, you might go too far, but you won't discover that until you cut the pot off. Then you discover that you've made a flower pot. That's all right, we need some flower pots too. This is just practice. The next position, I want to make the whole bottom of this cylinder flat, a quarter of an inch thick. So left hand on the inside, right hand right on top of it for extra strength and steadiness, and pull it to the outside. And then be sure to clean this up now, because once the cylinder gets taller, you can't go back and do this. Make sure at this point that the bottom of the cylinder is flat, like you want it. Now we have 
a nice thick ring of centered clay here. So we do two things at this point. We squeeze the clay, we take a bite, and we move our hands steadily to the inside and up and relax at the top of the pot. Hold this rim in, in center and compress this rim. Use the slip that's on your hands for lubrication at this point. If we used water, the clay would absorb the water and become too soft to stand up. Our fingertips are touching each other through the clay and stopping right underneath the rim and compressing that rim. You can take as many pulls as you want to get this clay as thin as you can make it. That'd be a good test. See how thin you can throw a cylinder. We have to tool a little extra clay. There's always a little extra clay at the bottom here. And when we're making pots, we use this tool to refine the shape as well as to remove a little bit of clay. Just hold it steady until you get down to the wheel head. And we use the throwing stick at, at an angle so that the clay will come off on the throwing stick, sort of like a snowplow. Make a little shadow underneath the bottom of this pot so that it sort of visually releases itself from the wheel. Just refine the shape a little bit and we'll cut it off. Have to dry a couple of fingertips and pick it up at the bottom, twist and lift and set it off and you're ready for another one.